My boss is the smartest and the stubbornest, the fattest and the laziest, the cleverest and the craziest, the most extravagant detective in the world, Nero Wolf. <laughs> It's the transcribed adventure of The Case of the Careworn Cup with that brilliant, eccentric, private detective, orchid fancier, and gargantuan gourmet, Nero Wolfe, starring Sidney Greenstreet. The place is Nero Wolfe's office. At the moment, the world's greatest motionless detective is sitting in the chair which was built especially to support his 300 pounds. His eyes are closed, and he's making sounds through his nose. Archie. Archie. Archie! Yes, Mr. Wolf, what is it? The phone, if you please, Mr. Goodwin. But it's on your desk, only eight and three-quarter inches from your left elbow. All you have to do is lean forward. Found it, Archie. What do you think I am, an athlete? Hello. No, wrong number, mister. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Wolf, if that old phone awakened you. Wrong number, and I was not asleep. I was merely... Uh, Concentrating. On what? We're out of work. There's nothing to concentrate on. May have escaped your errant attention, Archie. But there are other subjects for thought besides murder. Mm -hmm. Sure, blondes. And blondes. You're right at that, brunettes. Fooey. That's not a nice thing to say about any girl, even if she does happen to be a brunette. Archie. Yes, sir? Go away. You annoy me. Suppose I did. It would get your beer for you. Fruits. Tonight happens to be Fritz's night off. However, you can always get your beer for yourself. Don't be an idiot. There are exactly 23 steps between here and the kitchen. As you very well know, I abominate strenuous physical activity. 23 steps times two is 46. You could walk very slow. Nonsense. Now that you mention it, uh, <clears throat> I happen to be mildly thirsty, Archie, would you? Now that I mention it, you'd better let the beer go for tonight. Why? Our stock is running low. You mean careless? I've been careful, because something else is also running low. What? Money? Federal sticks, there's plenty in the bank. Sure, but very little of it is yours. Mr. Wolf, do you remember that batch of orchids you bought last week? Of course I do. Magnificent and very rare specimen. I got a magnificent bill for him this morning, too. It was uh, large? It was large. Mm -hmm. Confound it, Archie. I shall have to do some work. You turned down half a dozen cases in the last few weeks. When do they still require me? Most of them hired as the detectives. However, there is a Mr. Wenceslas who might still be in need. His problem is what? As I remember, he's being followed by midgets. <laughs> he wanted you to do something about it. Not, not that he minded the midgets so much. It was the elephants they were riding. The man needs a psychiatrist, not a detective. Anyone else? Uh, I can check my files, but I don't think... Ha-ha! <laughs> Saved by the bell. Another cliche like that, and I shall... Should... Answer the phone yourself? Assassinate. You'll see what it is. Okay. Hello? Yes, Mr. Wolf is in. Yes, he'll be in. He always is. What? But... Hmm. That was a Mr. Charles Porter. He was in a hurry. He's on his way over right now. Should be here in ten minutes. Prospective client, I trust? A thousand dollars worth of prospective client. Splendid, Archie, my beer. Okay, but, uh, <clears throat> look, I'm not sure you're going to accept his offer. Indeed, what does he want me to do for his paltry fee? That's the point. If I heard him right, he wants you to do nothing. The door, Archie. Yes, sir. I hear it. Mr. Porter? Naturally, I'm Charles Porter. Who else would I be? It's a large field. Uh, never mind. Come on in. I'm Archie Goodwin. Where is Wolf? Mr. Wolf is in here. Mr. Wolf, this is Mr. Porter. Good evening. Fat, aren't you? It's moderately noticeable. Out your chair for Mr. Porter. Don't bother. I'm too impatient to sit. When I have business to take care of, I take care of it quickly. Very well. 
Send him out of the room. Mr. Goodwin, nonsense. He's my assistant. He remains. I don't like it. Archie, show Mr. Porter out. Now, wait. There's no need to get temperamental. Perhaps I'm a little abrupt. Rude. I'm a worried man. And impatient. You're wasting time, Mr. Porter. I suppose I am. The reason I came to you... Young man, what are you doing with that notebook? Getting ready to make marks in it, but... No, never mind. Mr. Wolfe, you have a client named Dorothy Spencer. Have I? There's no need to be coy about it. I happen to know. Then you know. I want you to drop her. Drop her? Refuse to handle her case. Close the books on her. You know what I mean. Why should I? The girl has no money. I have. That doesn't answer my question. Perhaps this will. Appear to be a small package of dollar bills. It happens to be a thousand dollars. Archie, will you? I will. It is a thousand dollars. Thank you. Mr. Porter. Yes? You're paying me a thousand dollars in order that I refuse to act for Miss Spencer. Nothing more. That's right. What does she suspect you of? I said nothing about... Well, that is... You must know that as well as I do. Possibly. Nevertheless, what does she suspect you of? Of uh, being a blackmailer. Whereas your occupation really is... I'm a musician. A pianist. I'm appearing nightly at the Windsor Hotel. Archie, have you made out a receipt for Mr. Porter? Yep. Give it to him and show him to the door. Okay. Mr. Porter? Mr. Wolf, I want your assurance that the entire affair is definitely finished. My association with Miss Spencer, you mean. You have my assurance that it is. You will forgive a classical illusion. The Carbo. Thank you. Good night. Mr. Wolf, I have a secret about Mr. Porter. He <laughs> smells. Some perfume or other. More important, his right coat cuff is more worn than his left cuff. And a cover happens to be a musical term, meaning start again from the beginning. Oh, Porter thought it meant finished. Therefore, Mr. Porter is a liar. His ignorance of common musical term indicates that he's not a musician. The worn right coat cuff, that he is an office worker. That's kind of leaping to a deduction. But even if Porter's a liar, Mr. Wolf, there is something else. He, uh, he paid you a thousand dollars to drop a client named Dorothy Spencer... Mr. Wolf, you never had a client with that name. Well, that's that. Dorothy Spencer is not in. Anyway, she's not answering her phone. Uh, Mr. Wolf, I said... I know what you said. Ah. That a comment? I'm worried. Mr. Porter may have assumed erroneously that Dorothy Spencer had employed or was intending to employ me. That does not explain why he lied about his occupation. Maybe he didn't lie. After all, your deductions could be wrong. Phooey. Okay. Take care of that. Right now. I'm phoning her. Hello. Uh, Windsor Hotel? Get me the manager's office. Thanks. Ah, uh, could, could, could you tell me if a Charles Porter plays the piano at... Uh-huh. She sounds blonde. I see. Thanks a lot. What do you do after work? You... Oh, well, so long. She goes home and beats her husband. About Porter, Archie. Bad news. He does play the piano at the Windsor in the move room. So where does that leave your deductions? Untouched, of course. Let me think. Hmm... Yes, naturally. Naturally what? I came to the conclusion that Mr. Porter was an office worker. We have just discovered that Mr. Porter is not an office worker, therefore... You were wrong. I am never wrong. Therefore, the man who was here is not Charles Porter. Mr. Wolf, do you think a man of your weight should climb out on a limb like that? Fiddlesticks. Look up Porter in the phone book and call him. Okay. I'll take a second. Uh, Archie, the phone company's best friend. <clears throat> yep, here he is. What do I ask him? Um, there'll be no need to ask Mr. Porter anything. Just phone. You're the boss. Yeah, I have to say something to the guy. 
Hello. I'd like to speak to Charles Porter. So would you. Who is... Oh, Stebbins, huh? Yeah, that's right, Archie. Oh. No, no, don't, don't, don't bother why I call it a coincidence. Goodbye. You know who that was? No. That was Sergeant Stebbins, Sergeant Pearlie Stebbins. I might add as though you didn't know that Stebbins happens to be a sergeant in homicide. Indeed. You expected this. I still don't know what your conversation was about. It was about Charles Porter, who maybe was a liar, but who isn't going to tell any more lies on account of he was just shot to death. If it ain't Archie Goodwin. Come in, Goodwin. Thank you, Sergeant Stebbins. I've been expecting you. Oh, that's sweet of you to say that, Pearlie. <laughs> Why did you phone Porter? His right coat cuff was more worn out than his left. So for that, you had to kill him? No, nope. actually, I killed him because he didn't know his duck couple. Hey. Yeah, hey. He don't look good anymore, eh? Guys who stop bullets with their face never look good. Pearlie, you've been robbed. I did... Hmm? That corpse is not Porter. <laughs> now relax, Goodwin, relax. His fingerprints were on file and they check. His girlfriend says he's Porter. If he could get up and talk, he'd tell you he was Porter. And what makes you think he isn't? Well, because when he visited us earlier tonight, he looked different. Not much, but... You said girlfriend? Yes, I said girlfriend. She's in the next room mopping up. She kind of broke down when we brought her here. You brought her here? Now, don't tell me what her name is. Why shouldn't I? It's Spencer. Dorothy Spencer. Ooh, that's what I was afraid of. Sergeant, I... Oh. Ignore him. He comes with the woodwork. His name is Goodwin, Miss Spencer. Archie Goodwin. Find what you were looking for? What I was looking... Somebody's gone through this place like a minor league hurricane. You? What business is it of Of mine? None, maybe. On the other hand, Nero Wolf might have other ideas. Matter of fact, I'm sure he'd have. Miss Spencer, why don't you go see him? The address is 601 West 35th Street. I don't see why... You want your boyfriend's murderer found, don't you? Now listen, Goodwin, the police are working on this. Sure, they'll see to it nobody harms a corpse. Goodbye, Miss Spencer. Don't forget that address, 601 West 35th Street. Believe it or not, you used to be a client of ours. Oh, Mr. Wolf, you're getting to be so brilliant, it's boring. Fooey. <laughs> That is, um... Uh... All right, tonight you deserve it. I'll get you another can of beer. But this is the last one. Unless you promise to do some exercise, like, uh... Like maybe standing up and sitting down five minutes a day. Thank you. <sighs> and why should I indulge in such idiotic behavior? Well, after a while, you might be able to see your shoes. I've already seen them. Oh, that was 20 years ago. Things have changed. No more buttons. Hey, that must be Dorothy Spencer. Hmm, she's undoubtedly young and beautiful. You deduce that from the way she pressed the buzzer? I deduce that from the gleam in your eye, bah. Bah, all you want. I'm going to keep that gleam shining. Hello, Miss Spencer. Come in. Thank you. Mr. Wolf. Is the large sitting-down gentleman behind the desk. This is Dorothy Spencer, Mr. Wolf. You will forgive me not rising. It is due to a necessary conservation of energy rather than rudeness. Archie, a chair. Sure. Here you are, Miss Spencer. Thanks. Now then, Miss Spencer, have the police found anything but dust in Mr. Porter's closet? Why, no. You were engaged to Mr. Porter? I was. That ring you're wearing, he gave you? Yes. May I see it? Well, all right. Here. Thank you. Hmm, expensive. Very expensive. You may have it back. Miss Spencer, why are you marrying Charles Porter? I, I loved him. Fooey. Mr. Porter, according to Archie's description, was twice your age with considerably less than half your attractiveness. Love may perhaps be blind, but it is not astigmatic. I, I don't know what you mean. What were you searching for under the nose of the police? Nothing. Nothing how, at all. How did your fiancé earn his money? He played the piano at the... Boy, what he earned there in a year wouldn't begin to pay for the ring he gave you. Would you like to try again? I don't know how he made his money. I suggest that you do. I suggest that he earned money by the same method that he induced you to consider marrying him. Blackmail. Oh, but... Why was he blackmailing you? 
old letters I'd written when I was too young to know any better. Your motives for murdering Porter would be twofold, then. Recovery of blackmail material and the avoidance of marriage to a man you dislike. I didn't kill Charles. No doorbell, Archie. Get Miss Spencer into the kitchen once. Must be the police. Yeah, let's go, Miss Spencer. Right through that door. And stay there until I call you. Front door, Archie. Uh, Mr. Wolf, do I know Dorothy Spencer's here? You know nothing. A simple role for you to play. Uh, I haven't got time to resent that insult right now, but wait until the next time you drop a collar button. Well, bless my soul, if it isn't dear old Inspector Kramer. How is the homicide department? Where's Wolf? Big surprise. He's sitting. Mr. Wolf. Good evening, Inspector. Where's Dorothy Spencer? This is not the Bureau of Missing Persons. The district attorney would like to talk to her. I shall tell her so the next time we meet. Yeah, that could be right now. She's in this house. I don't see her. Mind if I look around for myself? You have a search warrant, of course. Uh, it so happens, no, but... Uh... Archie, the inspector's leaving. Okay, I'm leaving. I suppose by the time I get back with a warrant, she'll be in Hoboken. Hoboken? Where's that? Look, Wolf, you can go too far. One of these days, you'll be able to talk yourself out of a... I... Ah... Uh... Trail me to the door, Goodwin, to show what a good detective you are. Oh, Inspector Kramer doesn't love us anymore. Unfortunate. Archie, take Miss Spencer to a respectable hotel. Register her under an assumed name. She is to stay there until notified otherwise. Luckily, the good inspector neglected to inform us that she was the leading suspect in a murder case. Hence, we're not accessories after the fact, and I don't want her arrested for murder as yet. Her beauty has won you over. Oh, you will then return here immediately. Okay. What are you going to be doing in the meanwhile? I, uh, she shall be thinking. <laughs> Archie? No. No, not Archie. Ah, that impatient and non-musical friend came in through the window. How are you, Mr... Not Porter, of course. Where's the girl? Question is beginning to bore me. I don't know. I think she's here. So did the police. I might add that they were slightly closer to the truth. Incidentally, what makes you think she was Porter's accomplice? She must have been. Nonsense, she wasn't. Porter was blackmailing her. Just as he was blackmailing you. In her case, it was letters. In yours, a previous criminal record, perhaps, that your employers might be interested in. I want to know where she is. Maybe this would help you remember. Good heavens, don't point a pistol at me. It annoys me. Ah, the police, I should think, open the door for them like a good fellow. Oh, no. I'm leaving. But if I don't find that girl, I'll be back. Knock the blasted thing down if it isn't open. All right, well, I've got the search warrant. Oh, so no doubt a fine tooth comb. Bah. By the way, Inspector. All right, boys, cover the house. All right, Inspector. Well, what did you want? As your men go through the house, will you have one of them shut the back window? I've just had a burglar, and I suspect he left it open. Unless the matter is attended to, the house might be filled with <laughs> fresh air. Well, what's the matter with that? Fresh air, deadly poison. It clogs the lungs. And may I point out that the warrant you're clutching in your hot little hand is not a lease on the house. Finish your search quickly, if you please, and then... Uh, <laughs> why not try hobo? So I just missed the inspector, huh? You did? That I can stand. I'm sorry about the burglar, though. Perhaps we can arrange to have you meet him in the morning. He left his calling card with name and address on it? He dropped his handkerchief here on my desk. Oh. Hmm. It's a handkerchief. It smells. So it does. But, um... All of our unknown friends' clothes carry the odor. Therefore... Yeah? You will go out immediately to the nearest drugstore, buy a specimen of every kick of soap manufactured in this country. He's there. No. I never realized just how many different brands of soap are made in this country. 
You should listen to the radio more often. So far, we've sniffed at 37 cakes. None of them smell like porter. Uh, let's see. 38. Hey. Let me have it, Archie. Yes, the soap. Ah, it's labeled orchid ovals. I should say basically mislabeled. Orchids have no odor. Our task for the evening is finished. Why? All we know is the guy washes with a basely mislabeled soap. No, the odor would not have been so persistent in that case. Unquestionably, our visitor works for a soap company that makes orchid ovals. Every employee of a plant in which perfume in large quantities is used inevitably carries the odor on his clothes. Oh. And you already deduced he works in an office. Uh Uh-huh. Ah, I, I go see him in the morning? You do? You know, Mr. Wolf, what with hiring rooms for girls and paying visits to a perfume factory, I'm beginning to feel like a maiden aunt. No one would ever mistake you for a maiden aunt, Archie. Thanks. Is that another deduction? Maiden aunts rarely need a shave. <laughs> Good morning. One moment, please. Oh, can I do anything for you, sir? Yeah. That is, uh, let's postpone that question and slip another one. I'm, I'm looking for one of your office people. He's in his 40s, 5 foot 10, brown hair and eyes, speaks in a sharp, quick voice. He owes you money, too. Uh, who owes me money? Mr. Wheeler, the man you were describing. He owes everybody money. In spite of the fact that he's office manager and makes lots and lots of money. How much does he owe you? Hmm? Oh, not, not an awful lot. It won't break me if I don't get it. Is he in yet? Well, he was, but he went home. He was sort of sick. Sort of? Mm-hmm. He got a phone call from somebody and rushed out. Mm, too bad. Well, I'd better scram. Well, you didn't answer my question yet. I'm off at five. My name's Gwen. Goodbye. <laughs> Wolf speaking. Archie here. Uh, unknown's name is Wheeler. He left the office this morning sick after he got a mysterious phone call. Bad, probably. For... Get to Dorothy Spencer at once and bring her here. Right. I'm at Wheeler's house now. Thought I'd better check. His wife's here, too. Blonde? Uh-huh. How could you tell? Fetch you smirk in your voice. Get out of there fast and don't stop to console Mrs. Wheeler. <laughs> Uh, Never mind pulling triggers. I'll shut it. Oh, Archie. I would prefer silence. Keep your hands high, Goodwin. It's unhealthy. All the blood had run into my head. Archie, he murdered Charles. He did. Tut, Mr. Wheeler. You really shouldn't have it. It's against the law. Get into the bathroom, both of you. I already shaved. I phoned him. I thought maybe he had my letters. Porter couldn't keep his mouth shut about his other victims. He was going to force Dorothy to marry him. Did you find his material, Wheeler? Yes. In an office, he read it as a front. It's all burned. And why all the melodrama? You know about me, so does she. I can't trust anyone... Get into the bathroom, I said. Look, let's not lose our heads about this. Get moving, Goodwin. I like it here. All right, then. Here is where you'll get it. Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Something's wrong. I got shot and Wheeler fell down. I shot him, Goodwin. Stebbins. Dear Sergeant Stebbins. Oh, you little flat-footed angel. (laughs) It's lucky for you my flat feet got staked out here in time. Just for that, I'll buy you a pair of arch supports for your next birthday. But... I'm beginning not to believe this. You had it all figured out? Well, not exactly. Well, that is... Uh Ah, Wolf sent you here. Well, he kind of phoned in and suggested one of us shoot down here and do some rescue work. (laughs) That old devil. Hey, you're not kidding. (laughs) What are you laughing about? (laughs) Wolf wasn't sure whether you'd need rescuing from Wheeler or... (laughs) Stop killing yourself with your own jokes. (laughs) Or whether Miss Spencer would need rescuing from you. You've been a very foolish young woman, Miss Spencer. I suggest that in the future you exercise more care in your correspondence. Oh, I shall, Mr. Wolf, but 
How can I ever thank you? Well, one one way would be to listen wide-eyed while he explains how he solved the case. I have no intention of... Oh, come on, Mr. Wolf. Stop stalling. Please, mm. Mr. Wolf. Well, uh, I'd be very happy to. As a matter of fact, I'd like to see anyone try to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> a man came to me, offered me a thousand dollars to drop a client I didn't have. Why? Because obviously he wished to direct my attention to that client. Me? You, Miss Spencer. Now then, he identified himself as Charles Porter, a musician. But I tested him and discovered that he knew nothing of music. Ha! Ah! The da capo routine. Precisely. Therefore, he was an imposter. His purpose? Yeah? To indicate by no means subtly that enmity existed between Porter and Dorothy Spencer. Huh? Thus, when Porter was found murdered, I would presumably be convinced that Dorothy Spencer, balked in her effort to enlist my aid against Porter, had resorted to most foul and bloody murder. Most foul and bloody murder is very fancy, Dorothy. Shows he likes you. Oh. I thereupon asked myself, why should an unknown seek to convince me that Dorothy Spencer was Porter's murderer? And you answered yourself? One reason only, because he himself intended to murder Porter, as he did. Which Piccadillo he has, thanks to Sergeant Stebbins' accuracy with a revolver, already paid with his own life. Quadirat demonstrandum. Latin for that's what you wanted to know. I think you're wonderful, Mr. Wolf, and I'm going to... Ah, oh, be careful. Kiss you. Hmm, Archie, Miss Spencer is a very dangerous young woman. Today I feel brave. Do you, Archie? Very brave. What are you doing tonight? Nothing. Let's do it together. Bah. Oh, is that Mr. Wolf? I said bah. Would you very much mind conducting your romance elsewhere? I would not. And do so at once. I have a very important matter to attend to. Goodbye, Mr. Wolf. Goodbye. Night, sir. Very important. Very important. <sighs> You have been listening to The New Adventures of Nero Wolf, starring Sidney Greenstreet. Tonight's transcribed story was based on the characters created by Rex Stout, produced and directed by J. Donald Wilson. In the cast were Lamont Johnson as Archie Goodwin, and Jane Webb, Peter Leeds, Bill Johnstone, and Wilms Herbert. Next week at this same time, Nero Wolf and Archie will bring you The Case of the Dear Dead Lady. Don Stanley speaking. <laughs> chimes mean good times on NBC. The NBC chimes are excited about the big show. An hour and a half every Sunday night with Tallulah Bankhead as Femme C. Comedy with stars like Jimmy Durante, Fred Allen, Jack Carson, Groucho Marx, and a host of others. Music with Meredith Wilson, Mindy Carson, and many more. It presents drama with Mr. Jose Ferrer and many more leading stars of Broadway and Hollywood. It's the big show. Starts Sunday, November 5th on NBC. This is Chester William Bendix Riley. The man called X follows on NBC.